Hello everyone out there in Zoom land. Thank you for joining us on this very special Dharma chat. And the reason it's so special is that we have a very special person with us, uh, Kandro Sering Ma Rinpoche, and also uh, Kandrala's interpreter, Adam. Thank you both for joining us tonight. And thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, Kandrala, I think everyone knows who Kandrala is, right? So I won't go through talking about all Kandula's amazing qualities, um, but what we have done is linked in the chat to Kandula's uh, Namta biography, autobiography, and this amazing story that we'll hear a little bit about tonight. So Kandula, thank you so much for joining us. Nice to see you. So Kandula, I thought we would start with uh, a question I had. Um, I was noticing, you know, we met a couple of times now, and I, something that strikes me about you is that you're always like easygoing, free, relaxed. Lulu, Nelson, yeah? And um, so I was wondering, firstly, I'm wondering if Kandula can share her secret <laughs> of how to be so uh, relaxed, but I've also noticed this about the great lamas, you know, they seem to have this uh, carefreeness and relaxedness. And I was wondering where that comes from. Does that come from the practice of bodhicitta? Where does that come from, this sort of feeling and way of being? <laughs> Kandula, the so I'd like to uh, say hello to everyone. Uh, welcome you all here, both those who are physically here and, of course, those watching online. I want to welcome everyone and say hello. So in my own case, the sort of uh, peace and happiness that I have really primarily come from the kindness of his of his holiness of the Dalai Lama. Uh <coughs> so, uh, through, you know, uh, his power, uh, through his blessings, and through my own uh, faith, you know, uh, my, my trust and my one-pointed faith in him, um, you know, it has come to be like that. And also, you know, uh, when it comes to uh, all of our experiences, whether we're talking about, you know, the highs and the lows, happiness and sorrow, uh, you know, good and the bad, you know, they all uh, depend on the mind. And so, you know, 
to the degree that we can look into the nature of that mind, um, you know, is very much connected. Uh, it's the way things are. It's uh, seeing how things actually are. Mm. So we all, uh, <clears throat> you know, in these lives that we have, but we all have, you know, work to do. You know, we all have like aims and goals. And so in my own case, the, uh, the purpose, the, the aim, you know, that I've had is to really examine um, interdependence, how the fundamental reality is, uh, how it abides, um, you know, through studying the interdependent nature. And um, uh, this has been, you could say, my, my education, my interest, uh, the way I've applied my mind. Uh, and uh, uh, into that nature, and um, so and so. Therefore, uh, you know the qualities uh, that I have. You know the joy, uh, happiness, uh, the the joys that I have. You know come from from that. Rely on that. <laughs> Kangre <laughs> Uh, so, um, if one has that, uh, you know, then wherever we go, there's joy. Wherever we go, um, you know, we're okay with any kind of situation that we meet. And so, really, uh, when we look into struggle, um, we find clinging. We always find clinging. And so, understanding that, uh, you know, we can... Um, uh, yeah, we can find happiness. And, um, you know, I don't really have uh, too, too much to say <laughs> more than that about that. Um, so this seems like you're saying that, you know, this happiness is a natural quality of the mind or something like that. Is that correct? And then um, what's the role of um, virtue in creating happiness? And what's the versus the uh, natural state of the mind being already happy? Are these the same thing or do these work together? How, did, how does that work? <laughs> Dewa, di Jawa, di Kor. Rasun dia, di Gewa Latin, Dewa Ju. Ani rang semgi rang si nara, di Shide, yang Yoresa. Di ki netsu ki pola, rasun dia. Laso, ta ah, ini di Gewa sena, anda mikewa Gewa lah ya dengan tu. That's it. Sorry, Devi. 
Mm. So, so um, you know, virtue definitely leads to happiness. <clears throat> virtue is, we have virtue, and then there's things that are not virtuous. And virtue, for sure, leads to happiness. Virtue, you know, in the sense of a good intention, a good mind, uh, embracing what we do with, with the bodhicitta, with altruism, uh, the wish to, that, uh, to benefit others, anything that's embraced with that wish falls within um, the category of virtue. And so, um, you know, what, um, you know, <clears throat> the way that, um, you know, uh, understanding how virtue works enables us uh, to engage in virtue. And, um, yeah. And also uh, understanding that uh, all sentient beings, just like oneself, we're all one in a sense, in that we want to be happy, we don't want to suffer. And so really internalizing that truth, our oneness in wanting to be happy and not wanting to suffer, it brings us to you know, uh, a virtuous state of mind. <laughs> And so then, uh, you know, the kind of uh, courage that comes when we think about, you know, all other beings. Then it's very important to uh, consider the great kindness that all beings have. And Mm. La sola. La sola. Um, so what we call happiness, um, you know, we often mistakenly think that uh, happiness, you know, that we experience is like our own quality. It's something we've made for ourselves, something that is, is ours. But this is a, a big mistake. Happiness that we have, the joy that we have, the enjoyments, whatever pleasures we have, actually rely on others. They all, all of it comes from others. And uh, that's just the temporary uh, level. If we think beyond that to, you know, um, ultimate lasting happiness, more profound uh, happiness and bliss of, you know, bodhicitta, and of moving towards enlightenment, then for sure that completely depends on others. There's no way to generate bodhicitta. There's no way to uh, move towards enlightenment without relying on others. And so then, um, you know, we think about um, the, uh, the way that things appear and that the way that they exist. When we go more deeply into that, 
uh, we examine a reality, think about how things appear and how they truly exist. And through understanding the difference between the way things seemingly appear and the way they actually are in their nature, then uh, we can go deeper into this. Thank you, Kandula. Um, so it seems like it's very nice to hear about how the virtue and relying on others creates happiness. And then I was remember, I thought from the teaching the other night that you were saying, you were describing the qualities of the nature of mind. And it seemed like uh, happiness was one, dewa was one of the qualities of the mind. So um, is this, how do we, is this true? What I'm, what I'm understanding that dewa is a quality, natural quality of the mind. And then how do we touch this natural quality of the mind? Uh, so when we talk about this nature of mind, it's something that is we ordinarily have. It's just there. All sentient beings, you know, in this life that we have, in order to sort of make use of the mind that we have, we often use like a, a mind, a mistaken mind in a mistaken way. So what is this mistake uh, that we have? Because, because, you know, just naturally, we, we all have a position. We all have a point of view. Just naturally, we have my own point of view. So that the clinging within that perspective that we each hold. So um, it, through uh, concretizing, solidifying uh, both outer phenomena and the mind within us, through reifying or concretizing those two things, we end up with self-cherishing, cherishing of the sense of self. And there, so, um, and so because our perspective, uh, our point of view has a mistake in it, then our, our, our conduct, our, our behavior also becomes mistaken. And so we end up being primarily concerned with ourself, with our own situation, with our own well-being. And we don't really think about all sentient beings. And the courage to think in that way about all sentient beings uh, doesn't happen. And that is a mistake. So that kind of... Uh, you know, view that that we normally have is there's a mistake in it. Uh, you know, it's it's incorrect, wouldn't you say? What does it mean to say that something is? What does it mean to say something is incorrect? It's like uh, if we don't know how things fundamentally are, how they truly are, then there's a certain lack of knowledge, there's a certain ignorance in that. So 
So within uh, ignorance, there's uh, an aspect uh, of the ignorance which doesn't know the natural peace and happiness that abides just within the mind. And so, you know, the normal uh, phenomena of our the sense experiences that we have, you know, uh, things that we see and hear and taste and touch, uh, the, the raw sense experiences we have, you know, we don't see what their true nature is. We don't see the true reality right in front of us. So not just that fundamental ignorance, but then, you know, so many different kinds of thoughts and, concept, uh, and concepts uh, are generated by the mind, and then we get very confused by that as well. So within our confusion, we take what is uh, fundamentally uh, transient and impermanent, and we fix it as something solid and lasting. Things that are fundamentally not clean and pure, and we take them to be clean and pure. Something that's, you know, uh, has the actual nature of poisons, like the five poisons, we take it to be pleasurable and, and a source of happiness. So all of that, all of these kinds of confusion, you know, really come from taking uh, what is not self to be self, what is not an identity to be an identity. And from that, we get, you know, we get lust and we get aversion and we get delusion and we get jealousy and pride and ill will and animosity and wrong views and so many things like that. And we also like lose the honesty of our mind. And so through sort of, uh, you know, uh, being attached to what we consider mine, my side, and through, you know, um, aversion and animosity towards the other side, our enemies and so on, and then just taking no interest in everything else and all the rest, you know, um, we just kind of generate a lot of suffering and we continue to experience that suffering. So if we really like examine uh, that mind, um, you know, that kind of uh, ignorance that we have, then, you know, we'll come to see that there's a kind of um, ignorance that just arises, you know, each moment together with experience, some kind of co-emergent confusion that keeps arising each moment with our experience. And we'll also come to understand that that kind of confusion is temporary. It's not inherent in the nature, actually. And so we can come to, to understand and see that. And so because of, uh, you know, being uh, the imprints from, you know, from samsara's beginning, uh, of that type of basic confusion, uh, then naturally, of course, we have desire, we have anger, and we have delusion. They just come naturally from that. 
Sem taru 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 Subtle inner nature, though, is never contaminated by any of those things. And so, uh, in that uh, in that nature, um, that final, ultimate nature, then you know there's uh, it's lucid. You know it's clear. Uh, there's no suffering at all, actually. In that nature, nothing is unclear. Uh, nothing, you know, is problematic. There's no suffering whatsoever. So yes, we can say that there's happiness and bliss there. And uh, you know, from that perspective as well, even all the relative phenomena, all relative appearances, can be seen or experienced in a way uh, that is pure. And that is also blissful. Chetan Sanjin Jomdindi. Any talk about to Chichimbo, Digi Tambo, any not so simjan Samalala, any a chungo tambo going do, Tungi Modru, any Tungi Pangju of Modru, any Tunju Modru, Tungi Pangju of a day, Tungi de Rangi Madruba, Kunju Yuba. Kunjung的 Bajixi Jayundu, so, um, uh, in this regard, uh, the um, our teacher, the extraordinary um, enlightened Buddha Shakyamuni, um, the great uh, teacher that we all have, taught the first turning of the wheel of the Dharma. And in the context of that teaching, taught that taught us to recognize suffering. Suffering, you know, he introduced what is suffering. He taught us to to recognize that, um, and as that it's something that we can overcome. He didn't teach that suffering was permanent. He taught that it had a cause, and then we have the cause of suffering. You know, it comes from causes and conditions. It's a it's, it's a dependent phenomena, suffering. And what was the cause that he taught? He taught the cause to be karma. 
and afflictive emotions. That's where the suffering came from. And he also taught the truth of that suffering can cease, the truth of cessation. And the truth of cessation is in the nature of our mind. It is actually referring to the nature of our mind. He taught that as a way to introduce the peace and happiness that fundamentally exists within the nature of our mind. Um, in an ultimate way, he introduced that uh, by, by talking about how suffering can end. So that is the, you know, uh, what we need to attain, what we can attain is the peace and happiness that naturally abides in our own nature. And then in order to arrive at that uh, place of recognizing our own nature, to experience the peace and happiness that naturally abides there, he taught you know, how to get there. He taught the truth of the path. The truth of the path, he emphasized that the causes of suffering should be um, reduced. The causes of happiness should be increased. How that works when we do that, what the result of reducing our own suffering is, what the result of increasing the causes of happiness is. Uh, and, and then, you know, that leads to a sense of disenchantment um, with, you know, the confusion of samsara, uh, a sense of renunciation. And that uh, isn't just about, you know, giving up on something. It also involves understanding that uh, liberation uh, and enlightenment is something possible. And so the yearning for that, the, the, um, the wish for being liberated to awaken, the wish for awakening, you know, is born at that time. Thank you, Kandrila. So nice to, such a nice description of these high practices connected straight to the Buddhist teaching. So nice. And uh, when Kandrila teaches, it feels like you can almost taste, taste this. And I'm wondering how, if Kandrila has some advice for us or for how we take that taste and continue it, how we go from just an understanding to an experience, to a realization. Um, Kungitruasana <laughs> So this, uh, these, the, the feeling of happiness, the experience of happiness that we all have, you know, everything is comes from interdependence. Everything. And so everything that we experience as like a, a, an object that we can know, or everything we experience as the knower, of what we know, you know, when we really examine it carefully, everything is just interdependence. It's just appearing interdependently. Mm -hmm. Through exploring uh, very subtle uh, interdependence, we can come to know uh, that liberation is possible. 
that we are worthy of liberation also. And, um, you know, how liberation can happen, how afflictive emotions uh, and, and thoughts, where they come from, how they arise, how they're made, how they can be liberated. Uh, and so we can come to, uh, to know all of that. Mm-hmm. So uh, through understanding coarse and subtle uh, dimensions of interdependence and through generating real affection, real compassion uh, for beings, you know, uh, and I think a very important aspect is, you know, finding a really qualified teacher uh, and, you know, uh, and, and having faith and trust and pure perception towards that teacher. I think that's a very important element as well. So, you know, uh, you know, like, for example, I have this incredible opportunity with His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. And, um, you know, I, I feel like he is the Buddha in person. You know, he's, he's a directly like a Buddha or Bodhisattva, Avalokiteshvara, a being like that directly embodied uh, in a human form. And so, you know, seeing our teacher in that way, um, through with pure perception, with trust, with faith, receiving their blessings, receiving their teachings, um, you know, that kind of relationship, I feel, is very valuable. So perhaps, you know, you don't, uh, accept a particular religious tradition. So, 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 Mm. Mm. So that description she just gave was if one is, uh, you know, interested in the path of the Buddha Dharma. So in case one is not particularly interested uh, in a sort of, a, you know, or believes in a Buddhist path per se, or any spiritual tradition, then I think the most important thing in that uh, situation is to look into um, you know the suffering that we have. Where does it come from? You know the happiness and joy that we have. Where does that come from? What are the causes of our joy? What are the causes of our suffering? And um, you know, put effort into as much as we can into adjusting our conduct of what to give up and what to adopt in order to maximize our joy and happiness and minimize our, our pain and suffering. So I think uh, it, that would be the most important thing. So every day, for example, you know, we have a lot of work that we get involved in. So if we really think about it, you know, everything that we do, every all the work we do, 
everything we do is really about getting happiness, isn't it? 진지게 숙자 제로 또그 땀숨 같이 토바 이나 자치모다리야 이 체진들이 놓아. So then, you know, uh, but all the, the the objects and the pleasing sounds and the tastes and the sensations and the smells that we like and fame and you know uh, power and wealth and so on that we might get, it's good, of course, provides you know some happiness, but it's all limited, isn't it? But uh, the the uh, unlimited wealth is really bodhicitta, isn't it? The the good heart that's unlimited. So so chimzanola eki chintami. Something that can bring you know peace and happiness in our own families. Something that can bring peace and happiness amongst our friends. Mimanda jakap. Sort of in society and in a country, that's what brings goodness, peace, and happiness. So, so, Shiva, Sumba, Jibo, Deva, such as you, the Chanjugi, Sim, Sim Zambu, the Dendoa, D, Kondi, the end, Kitchen, Jala, Yakshu, Jala, Chukshu, and Ning Jeshu, the Dendoa. So, whether, uh, you know, we're alive. Whether we're dead, uh, whatever is going on for us, <laughs> the thing that is most uh, precious, the, the the true, the true thing of value, is the altruistic heart of bodhicitta, the good heart. Uh, it's the most beautiful thing that we can have. It's the most valuable, and precious thing that there is. Thank you, Tandrila. We are coming to the end of our time, our conversation. And we were in the library downstairs, which has a library with all these pictures. And Kandrila pointed out to me that we had these uh, collection of the fifth Dalai Lama's 25 texts. And um, Kandrila, could you explain why these, and Kandrila was explaining to me that the Uma section, the middle way section of this is so important, so powerful, the best teachings. And so I was hoping Kandrila could talk a little bit about the this collection from the fifth Dalai Lama, why is it so important? And yeah. So much Pitsukamala, any Kandalagi or Java Ngapa Chu Bimisitsa Sachamores, any Dingnam Dinane, Mixiti Umagi Chu, Haleb Pento Chamores, Sung Song, Chesa, Tiki Kola, Distis Trashi Gabraman, Tiki Kichembo Nibi Kim Sandy. Lazo Anni Kungi, that Benzu Chalenon Lomumbuche, and it's actually Mushuzi Resha. So, this uh, library downstairs <laughs> is uh, something collected uh, over, you know, has a, a lot of uh, amazing texts in it. It's actually a really precious place. Anni Lagwato. So, um, you know, in that, there's so many uh, teachings on practice, on the view of the, uh, of the Buddha's teachings so many collections, uh, collected works of great masters, so many precious things have been, you know, collected, translated, uh, printed, distributed. So this is a really precious thing. So in that library, I saw, oh, there's the collection of the fifth Dalai Lama's teachings. Yes, through, among the volume, volumes, uh, uh, what is the best thing for them to uh, publish and work on? Mm. 
So I said, in general, you know, all the uh, collected works of different masters are are wonderful, are very precious. So although there are uh, different, you know, views and uh, of you know, like uh, various views, and then uh, so therefore uh, this uh, no, Matemika text uh, from the volume of Fifth Dynamite is really extraordinary. So therefore, I have uh, uh, I told him that you know it would be great benefit if uh, wow. they could uh, print this, uh, translate this, and distribute this because. Uh, uh, Within uh, uh, many Madhya Mathematical texts, uh, the great fifth Dalai Lama's you know volume is an extraordinary. Ani da kang dar umandi tapay kaya mo si Chadori, so tawa chinju maluwa gita di jawang awi gati dawi na ani maanchi yada jayum ani pe nalanra gii ani keba gii sa chimpo sunyanjo. This Nate so uh, when we talk about uh, the Majamaka teachings, the middle way teachings, particularly they benefit um, what we call like um, incorrect view or incorrect understandings. And so they're very beneficial for that. The middle way view, the Majamaka perspective helps to correct, uh, you know, incorrect views and understandings in general. That's the, 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 the deep value of Majamaka or middle way teachings. And particularly uh, in the uh, teachings of the fifth Dalai Lama, you know, the way that he presents the middle way teachings using the, uh, you know, quotations, these sources, the precious sources from India, from the Nalanda tradition. Um, and you know, explaining them from the perspective of his own experience in a very uh, relatable experiential way is particularly special. And so, you know, basically, uh, Majamaka helps to correct incorrect view or understanding. And uh, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, Paramita teachings help to correct our conduct. Our behavior help to teach us how to correct faulty kinds of conduct or behavior. And so if we can correct our incorrect view, if we can correct our incorrect behavior, well, that's wonderful. Whether we're a Buddhist or we're not Buddhist, what do we need? We need understanding and we need a way to be, a way to conduct ourselves. So the value of these two types of teachings are really great. And Kandula, you, you um, went to great trouble to save these texts and also offered the, the 25 texts to His Holiness, Gyal Rinpoche, yeah? And... Any? Kandula, you know, you can't remember the text, and then you can see 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 the text. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 
so actually uh, uh, the 25 uh, texts in this particular collection are from the fifth Dalai Lama and contain you know uh, teachings on you know study and practice uh, and, and realization um, how to meditate how to contemplate and how to learn in, you know in a unified way and uh, you know extraordinary collection but uh, the pure visions of the Dalai Lama are not included in this particular <laughs> collection they're in a, a different one they're sort of secret and they're in a, a different collection mm. <laughs> so well, when we use this word secret uh, to talk about a collection, uh, of course, the word secret can be used in many ways. There's, we, we use secrecy for different purposes. Some things are kept secret to keep something from certain people or, you know, to hide something. Uh, you know, there's different motivations and uses for secrecy. There's different ways we use that concept. In this particular case, it's not like that uh, so much. Um, it's that um, the, uh, the true underlying nature of the mind, which is the dharmata nature, which is, you know, uh, is seen through understanding everything being just dependently originated. And within that nature, um, the, the true reality that we can come to, to experience. So uh, in that, you know, then the way things are experienced is, is, is different. Even what we call uh, imp impure or relative phenomena are experienced in a different way. And so, for example, in the case of this, you know, it's uh, from what we would see as an ordinary object, you know, his, uh, the fifth Dalai Lama was able to receive direct uh, transmission and a direct perception, direct empowerment and transmission and instructions directly uh, in, a, in, a, in a vision um, that was possible because of his pure view and his knowledge of the 
abiding nature of, of true reality. Um, and so from that perspective, then, the teachings on how to introduce that true and ultimate nature, how the introduction is actually given to uh, the true empty nature, how all phenomena that we perceive as impure can be apprehended as pure. Those kinds of, that kind of level of teachings, uh, you know, that's what it is. And as ordinary beings, we have all kinds of confusion. We have all kinds of thoughts and concepts and opinions. And because of all of our thoughts and opinions and confusion, one could generate, you know, uh, negative views, give rise to doubt, uh, you know, about such a teaching on that level. And that's not a virtuous thing to generate. And for that reason, certain teachings like this are kept secret. That's the reason to prevent that. Thank you, Kandula. Anything more on this one? Any the name? Tiki Kola. Yeah, so now, Kandula, if it's okay, we have a short break and then come back for a question and answer with the audience. So this is person, Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for the online audience, please ask your, Q and, uh, your question in the Q&A panel. I will receive that and be able to ask Kandula uh, those questions. So now we'll have a short break. We'll be back soon. Thank you, everyone. So if I can ask this question, and if it's too personal, you can say no. But I'm sure everybody would like to know what your experience is like being a Kuten. And the second part of that question is, <clears throat> are you only uh, oracle for Seringma or the uh, Tenma Chuni, uh, including Doji Yudrunma? So she can say no to this question <laughs> yeah, yeah. if she likes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thanks for uh, asking the question. Ani na la poya di ni jondar chijo mare le da melam gi ni chu hinza chiran so la na goba la pendo chijo mare taran chagi tu ji che so uh, this topic of uh, you know the uh, deities uh, coming down through me um, you know and going into trance and so on is not something that i like trained for you know, that I, as a result of my own training, it's sort of uh, to do with previous aspirations, and karma. And so uh, I don't think there's going to be a lot of benefit to, uh, to discuss that. I don't think it will be so beneficial. So I think we'll just leave it at that. So we have a question from the audience, from the um, online audience. So there's many students of Lama, Kebji Lama Zopa Rinpoche in the audience, on the live audience, yeah? So they um, were able to watch online some of the prayers during Tukdam. And they said that uh, many are saying that I think Kandula was there. And uh, if Kandula would share what it was like there, because they couldn't be there. Like, <laughs> Thank you. 
So um, all the students uh, all over the world, uh, students of uh, Lama Sobo Rinpoche, I am also uh, one of the students and uh, the fact that uh, he had not, uh, he's not present here has, uh, has a bit, you know, kind of a big imprint within us. Ani sanji temba chi, zamali simji chi lai na yang, ani oni pem misi ye, tongga chimbu chi dang, kocha chimbu chi chung sung. And for the uh, uh, entire, you know, Buddhist teachings and to the entire your world, uh, it is big loss. Kongi zeba da nanda de simji, da, and the Sanji Temba Simji Jilapimbiji and Zeba Nanda Samji Majavas Euros. His activities and all his uh, what he has done has has uh, a great benefit to all the sentient beings and on on, on all to, on the on the whole world as a whole. Pinayanda Lama Ji Chukuine and Beme Hundugi Simjila Zeba Nato Dundure. Uh however, you know, when the Lama uh resides in the um you know the inner space of the dharmakaya then actually uh, there's a continuing uh benefit and enlightened activity for the sake of so many sentient beings so actually, um, the most important thing we can do uh, is not, uh, you know, even to like physically um, meet with the uh, remains of, of the great Lama who has passed. The most important thing, actually, uh, is to put into practice what they taught us, which is to give up negativity and to engage in virtue and to generate uh, love, compassion, and bodhicitta for the sake of sentient beings and to, you know, develop our view, our understanding, and to continuously practice that, to put into teachings, uh, sorry, to put into practice what they've taught us is that's the most important thing we can do. And therefore, um, because of uh, giving up, uh, because of pure perception, because of our faith, because of giving up negativity, because of striving for virtue, developing bodhicitta within us because of the uh, power uh, and virtue of those, then the um, blessings we can receive from such a lama are as if he continued to be present in the world. Yes. We have a question. Yeah. Thank you, Kandrala. When it comes to developing pure perception um, all the time, not just when in meditation, do you have suggestions for how we can remember this bodhicitta, interconnectedness, altruism when we're at the grocery store and with our children and doing mundane activities? How can we continue to develop this? Thank you. Nitin <laughs> So all of that can be used uh, in any kind of activity. So 
ama söyledi. Tangbo, zeva da, şide, cüneci, zavazı, kiva insanı susu yipugu. Yani ne var dola? Yani sen zamuda, çambu, laya de, peki çemure. Yani bazı lega karizina, de ne çöğün anı, çamba da zevelo. Yani şoge nam seni, yani lega çava karizina, jimbe, sen zamu çeyde. Tangbo, gülüm zaçı bu çeyde. Kılımda tayi ve simcen tamca tüyündü çeyin çeyinde çavazı çevayına di mesi çava karızı çevayına anı di zaçı bu çavarı. Rangi doğu tüyünde, rangi bu tüyünde mayın ba, jengi tüyünde. Deni çamba da zevelo yapu hakona anı susu zöba çeya, yenge çeya, laksan çeya de gen jenla rağlı indir va. De çamın loğa gülaya çeya, kala zoya, çamın loğla Şirap yerce dağın, sınba zangbu, zöba, ninge. Yani lakbar dola, zeju çeyni, rangji madroba, emba madroba yi, ne çeydi zu. Rondu kari yi na çeya yi. So, you know, in a worldly sense, in a, in a normal sense, everyone knows in the world that, uh, you know, the real source of uh, love and the source of happiness and um, joy the original source are our own mothers so being a mother you know is, is a wonderful opportunity uh to you know it's to have a child children and to um you know be honest with them and to love them and to you know have a good heart and model a good heart for them is a, is a wonderful wonderful opportunity to put these teachings into practice Uh, in everyday life. And not only that, um, from when dawn breaks, you know, early in the morning, if you really generate a sincere altruistic uh, intention, may all my activities, you know, be, be beneficial, not just for me, but for others. And, and, and then within then the, uh, whatever happens in the day, all of our activities, you know, they will be uh, embraced with benefit and they will become beneficial. Whatever we do, uh, buying food and cooking, going here and there, you know, working, all the different things we have to do. If we have that intention uh, behind, then all of them can become meaningful. Meaningful in the sense that they're not just for our own personal immediate satisfaction and happiness, but meaningful in the sense that they become a seed for benefiting others. Kandala, so many messages saying, thank you, how wonderful teaching, so much gratefulness, Kandala. <laughs> many questions. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Kandala, there's a question about taking how, excuse me, how to take difficult, uh, difficult things onto the path like sickness and illness. Kingi lam du cher gitul kikor ra chua chig lepson mixegi net nawa nawa lam du cher tul. Hmm. Ta jengi lam du cher su selana. Ah, da su su. Tei su su ge karzo ro ta. Marza ro su gu ro. Marza di chig ah. Ji yuktu, lam ki ne tu, debu tu tu, sanji yi denbe yi. Ani, ji, yon su zobo jom de su zi chen ba yi na. Ani, jenge lam tu cher la ya de. Ani, jenge yon gui gabla, rangi zimba la, lo de pa ma da wa se ni. Rangi zimba la tu ta ni, rangi zinda yi nga ni, shedang lang yu le rang da sha. Jay 
So this topic of how to bring negative <coughs> circumstances onto the path, uh, it's really like a, an asset that um, that um, uh, so you know it, it comes from some um, some experience of uh, and, and you know um, yeah it's like uh, accomplishment in how you know the ground ex how the ground is what is the real nature of of the ground of our being what is the real nature of the path what is the nature of the result of the path and so having some experience or um, accomplishment in those then when negative circumstances strike you know instead of instead of looking at the circumstance, we turn the focus of the mind towards the clinging inside of us, towards our own grasping. We don't, you know, look outwards at the problem or the circumstance, the negative thing. We look and focus on our own grasping and our own clinging. We see our own attachment. We see our own aversion. And, and we work on that. And we try to uh, reduce that. And so uh, if we have some uh, experience, you know, within ourself, then, um, you know, uh, from that place of experience, when negative circumstances come, uh, you know, we, we, don't, we don't fall prey to attachment. We don't fall prey to aversion. Uh, rather, we generate patience. You know, we can generate compassion. We can, you know, bear with it, generate a goodwill. So uh, it, yeah, that's what makes it possible. Question from the audience here, yeah. Kanjala, thank you. I'm, I wonder if you could speak for a moment about uh, Pure Land, like Dewa Chen or uh, Tara Pure Land. And, um, whether we should aspire to be reborn in the Pure Land or come back to samsara, to which is the appropriate um, bodhisattva aspiration. Thank you. Chadri. So what we call a, a pure realm, the, the purity of the pure realm actually depends on our mind. If our mind's uh, negative emotions are purified, then uh, what we see now as samsara, this itself is a pure land. <laughs> And if we have a direct realization of emptiness, then we have total freedom to go to any pure land we want. And uh, if uh, we, uh, you know, realize bodhicitta, we can be born in any pure realm. So we talk about uh, pure realms. It's like there's actually limitless, uncountable 
pure realms are possible. So where, which of those you might want to go to, it's kind of your own choice. It's your own aspiration. In my case. <laughs> I'm personally quite scared of making aspirations to be reborn in a pure realm. Because of all these, you know, we're all sentient beings. We don't want to suffer. We want to be happy. All of these six classes of beings who wander around like us. So this, this uh, you know, uh, samsara, this world of samsara, which is so many uncertain places, uh, this suffering we, we cannot clear away. All of that is ultimately temporary. And we can be awakened. So un until we become awakened, I think I'd prefer, prefer to stay here uh, and help them, stay with them. If I'm able to, you know, uh, gather some merit. And through that merit, uh, reborn in a pure realm and have a really nice time there. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh, would we, w w yeah, would we be at peace in that kind of state? Would we have, would it be peaceful there? It wouldn't be. I don't think it would be a happy place. It's like if we have so many uh, delicious, you know, food, uh, foods and delicacies that we were eating. And there's someone sitting right next to us who's about to uh, die of starvation. We wouldn't really feel very happy sitting there and eating, would we? And uh, therefore, uh, you know, while I'm still here, um, you know, to uh, I'm really scared of leaving and going to some pure land. So I really prefer that until everyone's attained Buddhahood, I want to stay here and be of service. Kandala, what is the difference between compassion and bodhicitta? How do these relate in from my experience? No. 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 So I, I can't really speak about experience. I don't really have uh. much experience. <laughs> so, however, uh, through what we call the the, the, the wish of bodhicitta, the asp aspiring bodhicitta, and the one that we actually put into practice, the applied bodhicitta. So, 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 according to the different uh, mindsets and wishes and inclinations of all beings, uh, this urge 
to protect them from suffering, to, to free them from suffering. You know, there's that. So that's what we call like love. And so if we train ourselves, if we habituate to the, the, that love, that kind of loving mind. And so then towards all sentient beings, you know, uh, you know, we won't have any biases or preferences. So I think that's really important. So, but, you know, in terms of experience, I don't really have any of that. Sorry. And then when it comes to bodhicitta, you know, the, the, the vow, vow of bodhicitta and um, the, the training, the actual arising of bodhicitta, you know, we should uh, learn and, and go through the process of the six paramitas, the six perfections. Mm. So, um, seeing the mind that is, you know, just thinking about oneself, just interested in one's own benefit, one's own situation, you know, seeing that as a flaw, seeing the fault in that, and stopping that, and instead orienting towards all sentient beings, limitless sentient beings, and being oriented towards what benefits them. Um, that's crucial. And so, um, you know, it's not enough just to wish that, just to think about that. It's not enough just to, you know, rejoice in that possibility. We should put our, you know, we should actually engage in something. We should actually put it into practice. Because if we just wish for it, we haven't really got the bodhicitta yet. I think we have one more time, uh, one more question. Time for one more question here. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time of sharing your experiences, your insight, and your wisdom with us this evening. Um, as I was listening to your conversation with us and also your responses to your the questions asked, it made me deeply appreciate this path and this practice that much more. And as a lay practitioner who is not as studied or experienced as you are, seeing sort of the trajectory of practice across my own lifetime, I wonder from your perspective how you would characterize moments where you were able to recharge and refresh your practice or how you would inspire us to continue that across our lifetimes because it's easy to become almost autopilot in the things that we learn as we purify our view our perception our thinking as we correct our behavior we go through phases of doing it better and better and better, but then phases where we become very dull. So I'm curious, how do you keep your practice fresh and how would you inspire us across our lifetimes to do the same? Thank you. Kanjulagi Chusundu, any Morangi O Tati Sanjigi Lam Ti Chu Chugi Lam Di Ah Nunit Sachin Bore Strabogi Nanga Lungs Nunidi Yankir Depa Da Yi Chi Trouble Chunks Any Morangi Chua Sena Any Chiranashi Ra Any Nyamyon 
Zames, and Amigia Yins, and he in a young, not come to two yam and check years, and he cup cabla, desra, lunta, yabo, and he tsundru yabo, er, ra, and he denso chasana, on zupa, gom, and it sundru, and he ra, ninja, and denso chama, some sum, oh, yakwa drug do, some sum, ah, tes, pa, shum, and he oh. Rah mung mung wadra yang kita dus, cecah tiga hari sana cera kanjola kanjesi di nyamne yunchang nyamne yakor satu keris. Lasso ini tak ngaco pemuji kuji yang res. So we both are ladies. Hmm, ini ah ngadawina lo dini anu susu tak jece tunggu iri keris. So from the age, in my own case, from when I was about seven years old, I took, I was really curious about, you know, what, what are, what is suffering? You know, where does it come from? What is happiness? Where does it come from? How do the causes and conditions work for happiness and suffering? I've just been very interested in that. Pinza,ani,呃,没事情啦,那是说,说说听到几波子切完音啦,都可当,啊,你,呃,前上讲呀,啊,你的几个啊,呢,啊,你个,没事做,你是说完音啦,啊,你,呃,没事情,存着的,
and we get discouraged, uh, that's uh, a time to really uh, put effort into love, compassion, and bodhicitta, to, to inspire ourselves, come out of our discouragement. And um, on the flip side, when we have problems that involve like uh, attachment and aversion, when those kinds of problems happen, we need to, you know, use that wisdom we have of seeing that things are not inherently true and solid. And so if we can rely on those two, the, the knowledge that things aren't inherently real and solid, and the love and compassion uh, towards the relative world, towards relative appearances, and we can use those two, you know, feet to keep going, then life will get better and better. Um, problems will get less and less uh, chance to overcome us. If we don't rely on the wisdom that knows things aren't inherently real and love and compassion for the relative world, then uh, we will just fall prey to our own afflictive emotions, attachment, aversion, confusion, and so on. They'll carry us away, and then life will be one problem after another. Yes. Thank you. So I thought we'd finish the night maybe by requesting Kondrala if she has a special like prayer that she likes or chant that she likes, maybe she could lead us in something just to close the night. ตัวที่เรียนกันที่ตอนนี้ที่เรียนกันทั้งหมดจบเลยสิแต่อีกอย่างหนึ่งคือเราเอ่อเราสุดท้ายมาถึงเดียวเองนะยามนี้ตอน
Thank you, Dan, and uh, everyone who made this possible. Thank you, everyone who came. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kondula. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, everyone online. Good night. Be well.